This is Mac OS Ken. Relative stability in the face of COVID, Apple's App Store gambling gamble, and prepping for today's earnings call. It is Thursday, the 27th of October, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your subscription plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Remember that story from a few days ago? that had Foxconn asking workers at its iPhone city plant in Zhengzhou, China, to eat their meals in their dorms and to wear N95 masks outside their dorms, and here's seven bucks a day for all the inconvenience. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's over. CNBC ran a piece Wednesday under the headline, Foxconn's iPhone factory in China, the world's largest, hit by COVID outbreak. I gotta say, that sounds a bit worse than don't sit together at lunch. The headline says hit by COVID outbreak. The body of the article says a small COVID outbreak. Meanwhile, a Foxconn spokesperson says work in the facility is relatively stable with health and safety measures for employees being maintained. You gotta love that word relatively, don't ya? The spokesperson went on to say for the small number of employees affected by the pandemic, Foxconn, in compliance with local epidemic prevention policies, is providing the necessary guarantees for livelihoods, including material supplies, psychological comfort, and responsive feedback. Man, do I miss psychological comfort. CNBC had Foxconn calling the impact on affected workers controllable. As for the making and the shipping of things, the company says the outlook for the December quarter has not changed. If you're like me, you spent the first part of this week wondering how the App Store using world would take to the addition of two new ad slots in the App Store. Who expected to worry about the kind of ads? What we'd heard late last week was that Apple was putting one ad slot in the Today tab in the App Store. The company was also opening one ad slot in the You Might Also Like section on individual app pages. The complaint at the time was that app developers might feel compelled to buy ads on their own pages for other apps in order to box out competing apps and developers. We did not expect to worry about the kind of ads. Apple Insider ran a piece Wednesday saying there are more ads in the App Store, including gambling apps next to kids' applications, and worse yet, next to gambling addiction recovery apps. That gambling apps might end up kids' app adjacent seems odd. However, the Apple Insider piece explains, Apple provides a demographic filter for the app advertisers to choose a country, gender, or age range for their ads, The ads aren't necessarily targeted at kids, but they could appear connected to kids' apps, at least on accounts not bound by age restrictions or parental controls. Ads for gambling apps showing up at the bottom of pages for apps meant to help fight gambling addiction, though? Algorithm run amok, one could say. One could also say cynical and sick to the core. A piece from Mac Rumors on the same issue says the presence of gambling ads in the App Store as a whole has prompted some criticism, with some accusing Apple of being greedy and moving away from policies that the company upheld under former CEO Steve Jobs. Apple earns revenue from both the ad placements and its 15 to 30 percent cut of in-app purchases in gambling apps. And they were seriously turning up all over the place. Apple Insider had developer Simon Stovering saying that gambling ads were appearing on pages for his apps 30% of the time at one point. Fame developer Marco Arment tweeted his displeasure, saying in part, 
Now my app's product page shows gambling ads, which I'm really not okay with. Apple shouldn't be okay with it either. For now, at least, Apple is not. Wednesday afternoon slash evening, MacRumors updated its story. In the statement, the update said, Apple said it has paused ads related to gambling and a few other categories on App Store product pages. Paused. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, I guess. Target stores are getting more Apple stores. CNET says nearly two years after starting their store in the store partnership, the two retailers are growing the venture by rolling out more shops, deals, and products. If you've not seen one, CNET says Apple's Shop In Shop at Target is a dedicated space within the store that features the brand's devices, accessories, and a trained consultant. While there are more of these store in the store stores, still pretty hit or miss. Target's website says there are currently 1,938 Target stores in the U.S. CNET says there are currently 150 Apple stores in Target stores. To find out if your local Target has an Apple shop, the report says you can use the store locator function on the retailer's website and filter by Apple. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Which cup of coffee is your cup of coffee? First cup of the day? That afternoon pick-me-up? That one after dinner? Yeah, they can all be better with Trade Coffee. Trade makes it super easy to get the best coffee delivered fresh from the finest local roasters around the country. I've been with Trade for months now, and I have had one bag that was just okay. Don't get me wrong, it was not a bad bag of coffee. It's just the rest have been exceptional. Now, there's nothing special about my setup. I order my coffee ground and use the same drip coffee maker I've been using for... I don't know, close to a decade, I think. And yet it is making the best coffee because Trade is sending the best coffee. Whether you already know what you like or are new to specialty coffee and need some help, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover coffees that'll put whatever you're drinking right now to shame. Anyway, that's what it did for me. But find out for yourself... Right now, Trade is offering macOS Ken listeners a total of $30 off your subscription plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOS Ken. That's drinktrade.com slash macOS Ken for $30 off your subscription to coffee I am sure you are going to love. Drinktrade.com slash macOS Ken. And thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's show. So, today is the thing. Apple is set to report numbers for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2022, a.k.a. the September quarter. CNBC ran a piece earlier this week outlining some analyst expectations. Apple 3.0 borrowed from that, and now I will borrow from Apple 3.0. Here is what three analysts are saying. J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee thinks investors are expecting too little from Apple. While the company is not immune to macroeconomic issues, he and his think the demand for the pro end of the iPhone 14 line and the high revenues they generate will deliver results that demonstrate resiliency above the low bar of investor expectations at this time. While he does not expect Apple to offer financial guidance on the call, he thinks commentary will likely point to a healthier supply chain, improving growth in services, and lower foreign exchange headwinds. Chatterjee has a positive rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is 200 bucks. Cowan and Company analyst Krish Sankar likes Apple for its free cash flow and the 90 to $100 billion he expects Apple to give back to shareholders 
in calendar year 2023. Sankar has a positive rating on Apple shares and a price target of 200 bucks. And finally, Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring says just about everybody thinks services revenue growth should accelerate this quarter. Makes sense. I mean, I know times are tough, but the holidays are looming. That means at least some new iPhones, some new iPads, and lots of spending on apps and services. If he sees weakness, it's in wearables. He and his believe wearables are the most discretionary product in Apple's portfolio and therefore most prone to the pullback they are seeing in consumer electronic spending. It's interesting. iPhone has fared well. He's watching for worry in AirPods and Apple Watch. Woodring has a positive rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is 177 bucks. And now we wait, though not for long. Numbers for Apple's fourth quarter will go out via press release after the closing bell today. Then at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, Apple CEO Tim Cook, CFO Luca Maestri, and a whole host of financial folk will get on the phone to talk the numbers over and out. You can listen to that as it happens on Apple's site. The company will make it available as a podcast soon after. And of course, we will go over the big points right here tomorrow. I am sorry that this is such a short show. I had a day on Wednesday. I do have a couple of other shows you can check out, though. Today on checklist number 301, we are looking at possible scams tied to student loan forgiveness and how to avoid those scams. Also, we're looking at positive trends in consumer awareness around privacy and security. All of that on checklist number 301, brought to you by SecureMac, online at securemac.com slash checklist, or wherever you get podcasts. Additionally, on the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast, the Mac Observer's Nick DeCorville joins me to discuss Apple's App Store Gambling Gamble, plus how Apple is learning from accidental emergency SOS notifications. That's all today on the Daily Observations podcast from the Mac Observer, online at macobserver.com, or wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Trade Coffee. Get $30 off your subscription plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOSCan. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.